becoming sophisticated as a learner requires a lot. It requires overcoming your intuitions. It requires learning how to manage the conditions of your own learning. And uh, really, this is a pretty important matter in the current world. Things are complex. Things are changing. Across your lifetime, you can anticipate having different job settings. More and more of your learning is going to be in your own hands. How you manage it is going to be crucial for your future. It's like learning to learn is the ultimate survival tool, so to speak. And to become metacognitively sophisticated as a learner requires quite a bit. It requires understanding how to sort of uh, manipulate yourself and the conditions you're learning, understands how to interpret. This seems very fluent, but aha, uh -huh, this is the fourth time I've read it. <clears throat> that doesn't mean a lot. Understanding that you need to produce rather than just expose yourself. So there's a lot of aspects to uh, becoming uh, sophisticated as a learner in managing yourself. And more and more learning is going to be unsupervised. It's not going to be in a classroom structured by, it's going to be you on your own with technology usually, um, managing your own learning. So uh, uh, in taking charge of your own learning, you need to know how to do it. And to the extent that you are, uh, have a faulty mental model and get misled by current performance or sense of fluency, you are going to waste time and make some bad decisions. Uh, there's a recent book, uh, I would love to give the author credit, can't remember it right now, but it's called The Third Source. And it's got a subtitle like An Optimistic View of Learning in Our World. And the idea of the third source is traditionally there have been two sources for learning. One's your family context, the other is the classroom context. But now technology can change all of that. It's a third source. Sophisticated things can be brought to people who are in impoverished environments more and more. It's, it's something that if you want to take the most optimistic view, I don't know I would go as far as this author, but but it opens up the potential to, to level the playing field some. That if we can get uh, technology at its best in the hands of, of students who have been disadvantaged one way or another, uh, it becomes a resource that can, can let them kind of lift themselves up. And uh, that's, that's a very optimistic view, but, but uh, I, I think there's a great deal of truth in that. And actually, in some respects, uh, from the standpoint of a researcher like me, a cognitive psychologist interested in applying basic research to enhance education, it's a more promising domain. I can, within some program, that's designed to have people learn a second language or learn physics concepts, whatever it is, I can structure that in a way that I embed the things that, that I know to enhance learning. I can do that much more easily than I can go to a public school, get permission, which would be one thing, to innovate in that school, to work with the teacher, principal, and so on, to change things. Uh, it's it becomes all but impossible, actually, to do that. Because teachers have, in the public schools, uh, have standards, requirements. They have to cover a certain number of topics in a certain way. These things where you're trying to uh, innovate or draw on unintuitive aspects of research will make you do things that seem strange in the classroom and that parents may not approve. People expect to be taught the way they have been taught. And so um, it's very hard in some ways to innovate in the public schools. It's a bit easier actually in college classes because there um, 
college instructors often willing to um, try this with this section, that with that section, or, uh, but in any case, with technology, some program designed to teach whatever it is, physics concepts or something, alternative versions of that can be tried, ones that incorporate good principles uh, or appear to be good principles or not, and so it becomes a uh, attractive kind of test bed for uh, cognitive psychology.